So tonight, even though it's almost 1230, it's below freezing temperatures, I'm excited to be out here because the stars, the stars are awesome looking. What's up guys? Uh, we are out on the parkway tonight. You can't tell, but behind me here is a beautiful lookout looking over the Smoky Mountains. And tonight I'm capturing some star photography, some night lapses. And uh, I wanted to take you guys out here along with me to show you a little bit about how I do it. So I hope you find these tips helpful and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Now, a quick disclaimer. Because I'm not saying that the way that I'm doing it is necessarily the best way or definitely not the only way. This way has just worked for me and I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about how I've accomplished these shots. So I'm shooting on the GH5, which I know some of you astrophotographers out there, that's not necessarily the most ideal camera for the job, but it gets the job done and it does what I need it to do. And I also wanted to share with you guys that you can pretty much do this with any camera. As long as you've got a little bit of patience, you can do this with a GoPro, even an iPhone with certain apps, and any DSLR or mirrorless camera that you might have. All it really takes is a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience, and the willingness to go out late at night and give this a try. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a tripod, a lens that shoots fairly wide open aperture, say a 1.7, a 2.8, anything like that, that'll work great. Then you wanna set your shutter speed. Your shutter speed is what's gonna open and allow light to hit the sensor for a set period of time. So on my GH5 tonight, we're shooting at 25 seconds and that's opening the shutter for 25 seconds, letting all the light from millions of miles away in the galaxy hitting my sensor, which is kind of cool to think about. So if I were to do it for shorter, some of those stars either wouldn't even show up or they'd be a lot more dim. So I've got it for 25 seconds, which is the max time that I can shoot at that focal length and still get crisp images. Now this is where it gets kind of technical. You can find out what works best for you just by shooting a series of images and figuring out what you think looks good. There is a mathematical way to do it and that's called the 500 rule. What the 500 rule is, is basically you take 500, divide that by the focal length that you're using, and that'll give you the max amount of time that you can allow your shutter to be open in seconds. Now where it gets a little bit more technical is then you have to factor in your crop factor. So I've got a crop factor of two on the GH5, which means I have to take that 500 divided by the focal length divided by two, which on the setup I'm using tonight would be 500 divided by 10 millimeters divided by two, which ends up being 25. And that's exactly what I'm shooting. I'm shooting on a 10 millimeter Rokinon 2.8 lens. My shutter is open for 25 seconds. I manually set my white balance. I have my ISO set to 1600, and then I'm also shooting raw. So if I do mess any of this up, I've got a little bit of wiggle room and Lightroom that I can fix these images. What I like about the GH5 and some of the other Lumix cameras is it has a time-lapse function built in. It'll take a series of photos, and I can shoot those in RAW and I can edit those later and also manually edit a time-lapse in Premiere Pro later, but it will also automatically put together a video for me, which I can treat that as a preview to show me what I've got. And sometimes it turns out good enough that I just end up using the video that it creates out of the images that we took tonight. So I did shoot this in four by three, so that way I've got a little bit of wiggle room in Premiere Pro. So if I need to crop or straighten anything, uh, I can do that as well. It also allows me to set a set time frame. So tonight I set it for 240 photos at interval of 30 seconds. And that tells me exactly when I'm gonna be done shooting. And it also, because I'm gonna be editing on a 24 frame timeline later, that gives me approximately 10 seconds of time-lapse footage. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, leave this video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next video. It's freezing out here.